Hello, you're watching Eye on Africa. I'm James Creedon. These are our headlines this evening. Madagascar gears up for the second round of a presidential election on Wednesday. Amongst the major issues on the campaign trail, a lack of education resources. We'll bring you a report from the capital, Antananarive. And DR Congo is also getting ready for a presidential vote. We'll take a look at the powerful role of the Catholic Church when it comes to speaking out on politics. And a Christmas market with a twist in Uganda. It's run by refugees with arts and crafts made by them. We'll take a closer look at that later on in the show. Hello and welcome. Now, the people of Madagascar vote on Wednesday in a presidential election pitting two former presidents against each other. Ange Radzoulin got 39% of the vote in the first round, while Mark Ravelmanan scored 35% of the vote. They face off for the first time since political turmoil in 2009 forced Ravelmanan from power. Now, one issue on the agenda during the election has been education. A shortage of textbooks, dilapidated buildings. They're just some of the many problems in the educational sector. France 24's team on the ground sent us this report. 11-year-old Juliet just started eighth grade at school, but with 50 pupils in her class and barely any supplies, she finds it difficult to concentrate. I'm sad because the school year has just started and I don't have anything I need yet. I don't have an exercise book or a rubber, a pen or a ruler. The benches are rotten and three of my friends fell off their chairs because they broke. This school hasn't had a canteen for three months. There's no running water either to drink or wash your hands. With a 275 million euro budget, education is one of the most generously financed sectors in Madagascar. According to the Ministry of Education, the money is spent on paying teachers' salaries. Juliet's teacher earns around 86 euros a month. She's been teaching for 15 years with poor quality textbooks. We have six French textbooks for a class of 50, 52 students. Just look at our textbooks. They're extremely damaged. Here on page 48, it jumps straight to page 51. At lunchtime, Juliet heads home with her two little sisters. The girls live in a single room with their parents and their seven siblings. Their mother, Nicole, has high hopes things will change when the country elects a new president. What I wish for the most from the new president is that he'll lower the price of rice. It keeps going up every day and our business is struggling. I make nothing and our children need to eat and study. With no income, Nicole can't afford to pay her eldest daughter's 20 euro school registration fees. Julie had to drop out of school. I'm not surprised, I understand. No one helps her with the housework. If it was up to me, I'd still be in school. My dream is to be a teacher when I'm older. The government has plans for a massive infrastructure project to build 11,000 classrooms in the next three years. According to UNICEF, around 900,000 children in Madagascar are missing out on an education. To Togo next, where parliamentary elections will take place on Thursday in the West African country. But the political climate is particularly tense. Demonstrators have been calling for President Ford Nasingbe to stand down. A coalition of 14 opposition parties has said it won't take part in the vote, citing irregularities. They're calling for an overall of the elect an overhaul rather of the electoral commission. The government says the vote will go ahead. With hours to go until the legislative elections, religious leaders in Togo are calling for the vote to be postponed. Among them, this Muslim leader. He believes going to the ballot box on Thursday is too risky. Our fear is that we could lose peace overnight because the main parties in the Togolese crisis have failed to reach an agreement. Demonstrations here, deaths there, people are getting wounded just because there is no agreement between the parties involved in this crisis. Tensions have risen in Togo in the last few days. At least four people were killed last week in clashes between security forces and government opponents. A coalition of 14 opposition parties has criticised the electoral roll, calling it irregular. They want the electoral process cancelled. In 72 hours, a lot can still happen, and we are determined to make sure that these elections will not take place. According to a government spokesman, the ruling party has already made many concessions. 
The ECOWAS roadmap recommended the revision of the electoral register, which was done with the support of experts from ECOWAS. Today we have an electoral roll that will be used for the votes. The rest is down to democratic choice. These young people have decided to run for parliament. Their party, which they claim is independent, believes the call for a boycott by the coalition of 14 opposition parties won't solve anything. Okay. <laughs> Today, if we boycott these elections again, it means that people will be able to do worse than anything they've already done. We're going to these elections to at least block them, even in a small way, and prevent any fiddling or tampering with our constitution. Despite ECOWAS issued recommendations to end the ongoing political crisis in Togo, which started almost a year and a half ago, the country is no closer to finding a solution. The new parliamentary assembly, elected on Thursday, will have to vote on constitutional and institutional reforms without the main opposition parties. Next up, a look at the Catholic Church in DR Congo as the country gears up for Sunday's presidential election. The Catholic faith in the country is strong and bishops are widely respected. Some months back, Catholic groups organised protests calling on President Joseph Kabila to step down. He subsequently announced he would not seek re-election. Many of these groups have since been calling on citizens to take an active part in the electoral process. France 24's Thomas Nicolon takes a look at the church's impact on Sunday's vote. Tens of thousands gathered in Congo's largest stadium. On a rainy November morning, Fridolin Ambongo was appointed Kinshasa's new archbishop. In a country where the Catholic Church is more influential than any political party, the event drew believers from across the city. Several presidential candidates were present that day, but the crowd had eyes only for their new spiritual leader. I really trust him because he's a man of God. He's here to straighten us out, to put us on the right path. I trust him more than politicians. I trust religion more than politicians because it brings us closer to God, whereas politicians, well, we don't know if they work for us or for themselves, but God is truly on our side. In times of crisis, the church has often spoken out openly criticizing the authorities. Catholic bishops claim they have a moral obligation to do so. The church needs to be present when people suffer. The truth is that the suffering and misery of our people derive from bad governance. This is why the bishops, in keeping with prophetic mission, condemn what there is to condemn and encourage what should be encouraged so that we can have a new leadership that will allow the people to live proudly. In early 2018, several Catholic groups organized peaceful protests, calling on Joseph Kabila to step down. Now, with elections only a few days away, those very same groups are calling on people to take an active part in the electoral process. People have to be able, through such institutions as the church, for example, to go beyond simple observation and set up what I call parallel cells for the management of results, and which could lead to those results being announced. In the lead up to the vote, religious leaders have avoided speaking out, but in every single church, every Sunday, Believers nationwide are praying the vote will take place without major violence. The Zimbabwean military's use of live bullets to quell post-election violence earlier this year was deemed disproportionate and unjustified, an inquiry said on Tuesday. A government investigation found the deployment of the military was legal, but soldiers should have operated under police command. Six protesters died and dozens were injured in violence after delays in announcing results that made Manangagwa the first elected president since Robert Mugabe's removal from power. To Uganda next, and a government, uh, cr rather a Christmas market with a difference. The annual event is run by refugees. They sell a variety of arts, crafts, jewellery and foodstuff produced in vocational training programmes for refugees. Laurent Berstecker has the story. This year, Christmas has come early in Kampala. 
The city is hosting the second edition of its refugee Christmas market, a three-day event that gives refugees a chance to showcase and sell their craft. First of all, it's promoting me so that I can get some little money to spend my Christmas. He buy the shoes for my children, my wife. Many of these refugees are enrolled in vocational training programs where they learn skills such as weaving baskets or making jewelry. Some also sell exotic foods, like this wheel of Congolese Gouda. I just bought the cheese from Congo. It's very nice. You don't see it here normally. So, and nice, nice materials and fabrics. And the event is organized by the UNHCR to encourage refugees to become self-reliant and start their own businesses. Organizers also hope this will help improve the way they are perceived by locals. We really hope we can do this every year and if possible do it also in the settlements, bring it closer to the communities that host the refugees in the settlements. Uganda currently hosts over one million refugees, mainly from Burundi, South Sudan and the DRC, and the country is often praised for its open-door policy. It's one of the few African nations to grant refugees freedom of movement and access to public services, as well as to provide them with farmland and other work opportunities so that they can make a living. All right, that's all for this edition of Eye on Africa. Thanks for watching France 24. En France 24 nos esforzamos por brindar la mejor información hecha por periodistas de Latinoamérica y del resto del mundo. We look at how technology is shaping the future and we show you the latest gadgets you can soon get your hands on. نقدم لكم الاقتصاد بطريقه مختلفه نبسط المفاهيم والمصطلحات كي تكتمل الصوره لديكم. Aquí puedo hablar de medio ambiente, no solo de los problemas que afectan nuestro planeta, sino también de iniciativas y soluciones que a veces no tienen espacio en televisión. La différence sur France 24 c'est l'idée du reportage, nos grands reportages, vous ne les verrez nulle part ailleurs.